When I was a child, there was no electricity or TV in my home for several years. So flashlights and radios were essential for my family. Out of curiosity, I took them apart and found that both of them need batteries. Without the batteries, your flashlights won't be bright, your radios won't be loud. So I started playing with batteries. The more I played, the more curious I became. In particular, I was fascinated by this little experiment. If you wind a long and thin wire around a big nail, then connect the wire to a battery, the big nail would become a magnet to attract many small nails. This was like a magic to me as a child. <laughs> I never figured out how bad it worked as a child. However, that curiosity really inspired my passion for research today. So now, nearly 30 years later, I'm still playing with nails and batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Just in a different way. Instead of turning a nail into a magnet by a battery, I'm using a nail to puncture a battery. This is a lithium-ion battery, similar to those used in your cell phones, laptops, or electric cars. But these lithium batteries are much more powerful than those old batteries I played as a child. So what would happen if I punch a battery with a nail? Let's watch a short video. As you have just seen, after generating a lot of smoke, a brand new battery would be totally damaged like this. In worst cases, a lithium battery could even catch fire or explode like this. So, never puncture your batteries. <laughs> <laughs> then, why do we puncture your battery in the lab? It not only satisfies my curiosity, <laughs> but also is important. Since the commercialization of lithium-ion batteries in early 1990s, lithium-ion batteries have brought great convenience to our lives. They made our cell phones and laptops much smaller and lighter than decades ago. Unfortunately, lithium batteries could catch fire if they are not designed, manufactured, or used properly. This is a battery incident chart from FAA. From this chart, we can see that in the single months of June 2019, there were five incidents involving lithium batteries fires or smokes in airplanes or in airports, not to mention other events that were not tracked by FAA. So by triggering battery fires in the lab, we could better understand why and how batteries catch fire. And that understanding could then help us developing safer batteries. Indeed, such nail penetration testing has been widely used to evaluate if a battery is safe or not. However, there are two problems. First, the nails are usually big almost as big as a pencil. But in field failures, the cell phone or laptop battery catch fire, more likely due to very small metal particles inside the batteries. So the big nail testing may not be representative as the field failures. And the second problem is that they're usually dying very fast. So for a cell phone battery, it will be fully punctured in less than one second. So making it very difficult to get insights from the testing. Then I thought, why don't it make nails small and do the testing small, slowly? So my students and I modified the nail testing method. <laughs> First of all, the nails are much smaller. They are so small that our prototypes were made out of medical syringe needles. 
Second, they are very slow. And we did the testing 1,000 times slower than normal testing. It's even slower than snail. <laughs> In fact, because our nails are small and slow, my little daughter, Jill, called it a snail and drew a picture for it. <laughs> uh, in addition, our nails are sensitive because we put sensors inside. For example, we put a micro temperature sensor at the tape of the nail where beta is more likely to occur. So what have we found from this new testing method? First of all, let's take a look at the battery surface temperature by big and fast nail testing versus a small and a slow nail testing. From both figures, you can see the batteries increased, the temperature increased more than 400 degrees C, suggesting both batteries have went somewhere right away. But looking at the right figure, we can see that it took more than 100 seconds for the summer run to occur. So the process indeed slowed down. So this might be not surprising since we did the testing very slowly. But if you look at the internal temperature, you see the results are much more interesting. You can see that there are several temperature peaks long before summer ran away. This is really exciting for us. It not only shows that the battery experience internal short circuit, but not always lead to summer ran away. It also shows that if we could develop a method to detect and intervene internal short circuit earlier, it might be possible to prevent a battery summer run away. But where are those temperature peaks exactly from? And why didn't those temperature peaks lead to summer run away, even they are way beyond safety limits? To find out, we test the tiny batteries this tiny battery is much smaller, 150 times smaller than the normal battery in the video. Most importantly, it has very simple structures. In this schematic by my student, Shan, shows that this tiny battery has only five layers. The copper foil, the, oh, sorry, the next the electrode separator, positive electrode, and aluminum foil. In comparison, a normal battery would have tens or even hundreds of layers, making it very difficult to interpret the results. So from these tiny batteries, we found that the temperature peaks are actually from when the negative electrodes and aluminum foils are connected. <coughs> this shows that we can also precisely control the penetration depths, and also shows that we can get precise information of layer by layer details. Then more questions arise. Can we possibly change the composition of negative electrode and aluminum foil to make a battery safer? Or can we change the designs of the batteries so that we can reduce the chance of internal short circuit between negative electrode and aluminum foil? It seems the more we find, the more questions we have. But by answering each one more question, we could be one more step closer to safer batteries. But more interestingly, more and more students have joined me the efforts to share my, uh, join me the efforts to, and share my passion to make a battery safer. Even my little daughters have become curious about the battery safety. Indeed, my three years old asked me, why don't you put a battery in your refrigerator if it's too hot? <laughs> and my seven years old not only drew the cute snail, but also drew a picture of me as a child playing with batteries. <laughs> she also encouraged me to share these stories with you. That's why I'm here today. Thank you. <laughs>